everybody and welcome to another Top 5 Board Gaming video. As you may have been able to guess, today we are going to be talking about my favorite subject of all time, which is science. That's right, we are going to be talking about board games that discuss science at a very, very in-depth level. I've done videos about scientific-based board games, whether it's scientific and technological advancement, science fiction, all sorts of different stuff like that. But today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about games that really dive into scientific fields fields and principles and what it means to have, say, an atom or a molecule and how these things are built from the ground up. And we're going to go all the way from individual atoms all the way up to full-fledged species during this video. Now that said, there are plenty of games that talk about different scientific principles in differing degrees. And I'll mention a few at the end of the video that didn't quite make this one as well as during the video and I'll have some like compare and contrast types of things. But but with that said, we're going to start off with my number five. At number five, I've got a game that is all about building from the ground up. Now, we're not building an animal, we're not building an insect, we're not even building a molecule. We are building an Atom. That's right, we are talking about Antimatter Matters. Now this is a Kickstarter game that I got a few years ago and the idea behind this is that you are literally going around the board and collecting the subatomic particles to build up a specific atom. One of the great things I love about this game is the fact that it is so versatile. You've got team play, you've got competitive play, you've got full-fledged co-op play, all sorts of different stuff. And depending on what you're playing, will determine what potential level, so to speak, of atom you can make, the most complex atom that you're able to build. And with this, the idea is that you're collecting quarks. You know, you're collecting, you have to get the right spin on the quarks, whether it's the up, down, all that kind of stuff. And for those of you who don't know, quantum mechanics and subatomic physics and stuff is really kind of weird. It gets very, very strange when you go below, you know, very small numbers of angstroms. That said, it is a really fun game and you can learn a surprising amount from it. The reason that it's lower on the list is because, understandably, it is extremely abstract. You know, whether it is something extremely large or something extremely small, we as humans really don't comprehend that kind of stuff very well. So whether we're talking about, you know, 13 trillion dollars or something that is smaller than a single atom of hydrogen, then it's just something that sort of boggles our mind and it doesn't really make sense. But that said, Antimatter Matters does a really great job of bringing that to the table. In addition, you've got a lot of really cool action cards and things of that nature that are related primarily to things like the Hadron Collider in Switzerland, where they do a lot of subatomic research. But that said, Antimatter Matters is my number five. Before I've got one of only a couple of games that I actually don't own on this list. The game itself is from Stronghold Games and is called Terraforming Mars. The idea behind this is that you are placing down whether it is plant tiles, oceans, or uh, just building up uh, like sort of the biodomes, planting trees and bushes, introducing life forms, all that kind of stuff to Mars. The great thing about this game is that it's similar in a sense to The Martian. If you've read the book or the blog or seen the movie, whatever it happens to be, where scientifically everything is extremely accurate. You've got a, a map of Mars that actually indicates the actual locations of various valleys and craters and things like that. The places where you're able to put oceans are places where water actually would have been able to exist. And the idea is that you're trying to get Mars to the point where it would be, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it was certain villages in the Andes Mountains where it's not very pleasant, but it is livable for human life. So we're talking, I believe it was 14% oxygen in the atmosphere and I think it was 8 degrees Celsius. 
some, something around there. But either way, that is the idea behind Terraforming Mars. It, the gameplay is very similar to uh, sort of like Suburbia and things like that in terms of placing the tiles and everything, but you've also got your own cards that you're building up, and you've got different aspects. You've got plant life, animal life, microbes, you've got scientific advancements, all sorts of different stuff. And again, as far as the science behind it, it's fairly accurate. The reason it's lower on the list is because obviously this is very speculative. Now, certainly to a great extent, like we, we have found evidence of water on Mars, we have had rovers over on Mars, and you're able to have cards related to rovers, and of course the game itself doesn't even take place in this era of our history. It's supposed to take place in the future where these technologies do exist. And so that's why it's a little bit lower, is simply because of the fact that in terms of a pure scientific game, it's... Not accurate simply because it has not actually happened, but the science is good, it is possible, and I mean, hopefully it's going to happen one day, I'm sure it will at some point, but either way, it's a tremendously fun game, I highly recommend that you try it out. Terraforming Mars, my number four. At number three, I've got a game that is from one of my favorite companies that does these sort of fairly technical scientific games, genius games. The game itself is Peptide. In this particular case, what we're doing is we are going from messenger RNA and making a protein. So we are reading the codons and then we're placing down the specific uh, amino acid that will be next in the chain so that we can make our peptide chain, hence the name peptide. That is what proteins are made of, is peptide chains. And in this game, it's really... It's, I had a big debate with myself on which game to pick because, again, Genius Games has a lot of games that run this category, and I am a biologist. Like, I love all of their games. We've got Linkage. We've got Peptide. They also have some chemical games uh, like Ion, and then there's new games that they have coming out as well. Uh, but I personally like Peptide. It's the most complex one that they've released thus far, and it's, it's one that really speaks to me at a professional level. They all really do. Linkage more so because because I'm a molecular biologist and I deal more with DNA, but linkage is, while it does have important scientific information, it's fairly simplistic in terms of exactly what you're doing. Whereas with peptide, you've got a little bit more strategy going, and again, compared, even compared to the um, like antimatter matters as well as terraforming Mars, peptide and you know what's called the central dogma of biology is something that is generally more familiar to people. People are relatively familiar with DNA and potentially RNA and definitely proteins. So this is something that at least theme-wise would be a little bit more familiar to most people and that's why it's higher up on the list compared to the others. But either way, peptide is my number three. At number two, I've got a game that is fairly similar to a few other extremely popular games, but this particular one won out for me due to its complexity compared to some of the other ones. The game itself is Dominant Species, and for those of you who have played this, then you may know that some of the other games that were sort of competing for this spot, so to speak, were things like Evolution, or it's, uh, I guess you could call it a predecessor, Evo, which is the one that I originally played. Now, Evolution recently, well, relatively recently finished a Kickstarter for a new expansion called Climate. And Climate, the expansion, is going to make evolution a little bit more similar to Dominant Species. But here's my reasoning for this. Dominant Species, like I said, is a bit more complex than evolution. They both show relatively similar things. It's both about natural selection. With evolution, you are talking more about pure speciation due to mutation. You're talking about carnivores being able to run faster, their prey being able to climb trees, and then with the new expansion starting to be able to fly, 
all of that kind of stuff. What I really like about dominant species is that you have very distinct categories of animals. So you're going all the way from the little grubs and the insects all the way up to the mammals. You have an actual food chain that's going on here where if you move into a tile containing lesser organisms, so to speak, then you actually eat them and things of that nature. In addition, certain types of animals are better in different terrains. So for example, reptiles are much better in the desert compared to, say, a mammal and things like that. So that is one reason why I really prefer dominant species, just on a scientific front. In addition to that, you also do have aspects of speciation in this. You don't have the same level in terms of, like, I grow claws or I get sharp teeth or we have herds and that kind of stuff. Um, like they do in evolution, but with this you do have similar sort of adaptations. Again, not as extensive, but one of the great things uh, with this is you get a lot more in terms of how species are able to survive even in not so great conditions. The idea behind dominant species is it's recreating the beginnings of the Ice Age. So what you see a lot of particularly are things like migration. The animals are moving towards warmer climates because they realize it's getting colder so they move away and you're able to actually physically move your tokens in between these different types of land as opposed to again an evolution where I mean, you're not stuck, but at the same time, you don't have that option in terms of allowing your species to survive. So like I said, it was really, really close between the two. Dominant species narrowly edges out for me personally. I do love evolution. I love dominant species. And I still love the age-old cousin Evo as well, if any of you have ever played that one. But... Like I said, dominant species, strategically, a little bit more complex, a little bit of a longer game. Scientifically, you get, um, you get more of a taste of the ecology as far as how species interact with one another um, and not simply getting the carnivores, herbivores, but you get the actual food chain and the web going on instead. So I like it for its scientific complexity as well. That said, we will wait and we will see what evolution climate does because it very well may add a little bit more. I haven't seen the entirety. I'm waiting for it to arrive. I'm very excited for it. But for now, dominant species is my number two. And number one, I've got the other game on this list that I unfortunately do not own, but I actually discussed it just last week. That's right, it is the game that is currently on Kickstarter, Pathogenesis. Pathogenesis is a deck builder that is about how the immune system responds to infection. And the fact is that it is the most scientifically not only accurate, but in-depth game that I have ever played. It is absolutely incredible. You are talking about activation of the immune system, you're talking about the increase in the immune response, you're talking about just the innate sort of naive barriers and then breaking into innate immunity followed by the adaptive immunity. It's absolutely incredible. A relatively smooth transitions. If you want more information, you can go ahead and watch my review and demo on it uh, that I talked about, and if you want, you can also check out the Kickstarter for it. But suffice to say, we are talking about an extremely complex science in the sense of immunology, and it has been boiled down into this deck building game that includes things such as what we are doing as people that can affect how immune we are and how well we're able to fight off infection, and what we do that makes us more vulnerable, what we do that makes us less vulnerable, all of that kind of stuff. It's really amazing. It's a ton of fun. I highly recommend that at the very least you try out the Kickstarter. Hopefully you'll get a chance to try it out in a few months. But with that, Pathogenesis is my number one scientific board game.
So that's it for me, everybody. I really hope that you enjoyed this video on my top five favorite scientific board games. Again, I know there are a lot more games out there. I mentioned Evolution a whole bunch. There's also games about like the scientific process, one of my personal favorites being the new science. We also have things like Pandemic. We've got a lot of other games like Molecular. We've got Ion. We've got all sorts of crazy stuff. Oh, Compounded is another great one. So there's a lot of games that are about chemistry, biology, the process of science, just all sorts of different stuff. But as I mentioned, the games for this particular list for me personally are the ones that I find to be sort of the most scientifically rigorous. We're talking about in-depth, very accurate science and relatively complex gameplay that takes a little while to play. Either way, as I mentioned, I hope that you enjoyed this video. As always, please leave any and all thoughts in the comments below. What do you guys think of this category? What do you think about these games being used as teaching tools? Do you think that that's something we should do? Do you think it's something we should avoid and just stick to like the fantasy and stuff like that? I would love to hear what you guys have to say. With that, please check out my brand new super awesome Facebook page because I post my new videos up there. I also post fun links to all sorts of different stuff on there as well. So go ahead and check it out. There's the link in the description below. With that, thank you so very much for watching this and I will see you next time. Thank you so much again, everybody, for watching my video on my top five favorite science-based board games. Again, this is completely in my wheelhouse. This is exactly what I love to talk about. And more importantly, I would love to hear what you guys have to say about this. Do you prefer these types of games to be more leaning towards educational aspects, or do you prefer to just take them as they are and just have a really good time with it? All of those kinds of things, in addition to knowing what your personal favorites in this category are are. As always, I've got several of my playlists linked up at the top of the page so you can see some more of my work. And you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter to see updates and news and all sorts of cool stuff. And you can click that big giant subscribe button to see more of me in the future. Thank you so much again for watching and I will see you next time.